what's up guys this is going to be a review on the 112 uh, tier 8 chinese heavy tank and it is a premium tank so first we're going to talk about the armor and later i'll go back to the garage uh, to show my actual uh, 112 and i'll go over more about it all right so let's start with the armor 120 millimeters sloped back at about 60 degrees you can see right there look at that nice sloping right there so this is a really nice uh, upper plate armor I mean just look at the numbers right here 208 that yeah, goes all the way up to like 240 something but that's not even like really angled the optimum angle will probably be like right let's see this is a pretty good angle right here 220 230 280 so th this thing could bounce pretty much you know a, a lot of shots a lot of tier 8 guns some tier 9 guns uh, I have bounced the uh, BL-10 shells with this tank, so I mean it could bounce, you know, some strong, strong guns, you know, high caliber guns. So this is really nice, you know, upper plate armor, and it has no weaknesses on the armor either. No weaknesses in the upper plate armor. So you can see right here, you know, these are not weak spots or anything. There's no weak spots at all in the upper plate. So I really wouldn't suggest you know shooting at the upper plate unless you have a uh, really high pen guns, maybe a tier 10 TD or maybe tier 9 with gold rounds or something. But I wouldn't you know suggest shooting that the upper plate. All right, now the the second uh, part of the armor right here, the strong armor, we got the the turret, 240 millimeter stick, and it's I mean look at this turret. It's pretty much you know you, there's no way you're gonna go through this. I mean look at the armor. The manly, look at that 240 space armor. I mean, yeah, don't I wouldn't shoot the turret either. Same, it's like the same thing as the upper plate. Really tough uh, front turret armor and front upper plate armor. Look at these numbers. Same thing. If you want to take your chances, better have a tier nine or tier ten TD with a high pen gun. But other than that, I wouldn't suggest shooting the the turret armor in the front. All right, now let's go to the capolas. We got capolas at a honey, uh, 150 millimeter stick. So these are, they're, you know, they're pretty big and they're pretty easy to hit. And you know, there's no, they're, I mean, they're, you know, they're easy to hit. I mean, there's no like sloping or anything. Look at that, 180, 151. I mean, maybe you'll will bounce if you have the 122 millimeter guns, like the IS gun. It could bounce maybe once in a while, but most of the time, if you you know just aim cleanly of penetrate every single time so this is a weak spot of the 112 also the roof armor 25 millimeters on top so pretty much Artie's gonna wreck this tank so try not to get hit by Artie if possible but you know you're gonna have a bad day if Artie lands on top of here especially the tier 8 Arties which you will see since you are in a tier 8 tank because they have you know very high caliber guns and they'll easily one shot you or two shot you so you gotta watch out for that and now finally let's you know let's let's go let's check out the really major uh, weak spot of the 112 which is the lower plate so you can see right here it's only 80 millimeter stick I mean that's that's just shit that's complete shit right there I think the Tiger 2 has maybe a hundred millimeter stick or maybe maybe it's around the same thing but this this is a really weak lower play I mean you're not gonna bounce anything off it just look at it it's effectively 140 130 close to 150 depends where you shoot it at but it's just not gonna bounce too much if you angle it this is a nice angle right here you know could could maybe bounce one of the like the KV-1S gun you know the IS gun maybe it might be able to bounce every once in a while but most tanks you see are just going to be able to just shoot right through this easily and not only will they penetrate but they will also uh, catch you on fire this tank is very prone to catching on fire when I barely got this thing uh, first three matches caught on fire every single match so I decided to put CO2 equipment on it that's how bad this thing catches on fire I mean it constantly caught on fire so I was just tired of that shit and I was like alright fuck it I'm going to throw CO2 on it and that's what I did and I might recommend you guys to do that unless you guys want to catch on fire a lot but yeah this is the main weakness right here of the 112 lower plate just so shitty 
anything can go through this easily. So that's you try to keep the lower plate hidden and should do all right. Cause I mean the upper plate, the front upper plate, and the front turret very strong. As long as they don't shoot your cupolas, you know, just move your turret so no one can aim at them. If you're hold down, and you should do all right. But don't forget, this is a Chinese tank, and you know you don't have that much depression. All right, let's see for the side armor. We got what, 80 millimeters side armor, so not not too much at all. And then we got 30 millimeters of uh, uh, spaced armor right here, so that's kind of nice. So try to avoid shooting the spaced armor, but I mean even then, you should probably go through anyway. Try to shoot maybe a between the tracks right here and this maybe this area penetrate every single time easily or just shoot the the upper side armor right here not the spaced armor side of the turret is 130 millimeters thick still kind of a lot for you know side armor but you should be able to easily pen it with a uh, tier 8 guns no, it should be no problem and now we go to the the rear of the turret and the rear of the whole armor which is bo both are uh, 60 millimeters thick and you'll penetrate both of these pretty much all the time try not to shoot these uh, this little angling right here or you, you probably you know might bounce you can see ricochet right here with the uh, 122 millimeter guns you will have ricochet ricochet zones right here so don't shoot these you know, uh, these zones just shoot straight right here or right here in the back of the turret so guys, that's pretty much all we got to say about the armor. So I, uh, the 112 has really, really good armor, frontally and the and the upper plate and the front turret armor. So that's like the main strength of the 112. Here's the stats comparing it to the IS-6. You can see it's really worse in a lot of this stuff. It has worse DPM and carries more ammo though. Velo shell velocity is a little higher by just by 10. But here's all the soft stats. I mean, you guys could check these out. But yeah, you guys could check, you know, pause the video, and you guys could, you know, check all these stats out here. This is compared to the IS-6, which is the tank most compared to this, because they are both premium tanks, and you know, both tier eights, and both kind of have the same type of strengths, except IS-6 is way more sloped, has a really strong lower plate, as you can see right here. But way more weaker frontal armor. I mean, look at this. This armor is nothing compared to the 112. I mean, obviously, I see a lot of people using the IS-6 and they do really well. That's because I think it's kind of like, I think the IS-6 is kind of like a, a noob, a noob, a uh, noob tank. You know, like it's easy for noobs to do well in it compared to the 112. You need to have some actual skill to play the 112 uh, effectively. Because IS-6 is more, you know, it's more noob friendly. So. Yeah, but uh, you know, obviously ricochet zones right here, but no one, well, I guess the noobs do shoot these ricochet zones. <laughs> but mostly, as you guys already know, here are the weak spots for that, just the driver hatch, cupolas. And just this plate right here, I mean, it's, it's not that strong. 200 millimeter guns easily will take out the IS-6 in the front. Compared to, let's go back to the 112. Uh, compared to the 112, where 200 millimeter guns will struggle to pin this, or, you know, they will just bounce off every single time say the 88 millimeter gun it will just bounce off the one uh, the tiger's gun will easily just bounce off right here the upper plate and the, the turret armor but it will easily chew through this lower plate so yeah guys i6 is more like a overall armor and this tank has more like very good frontal armor uh, on the upper plate and very good turret armor both are good tanks and i have both of them and i will do a review on the i6 soon but for now, this this will be it for this, uh, guys. Uh, I will go back to the garage now and talk more about this tank. What's up, guys? I'm back. As you can see, I'm back in the garage. And here is my actual 112. As you can see, uh, it's pretty upgraded, you know. has a lot of crew skills and whatnot. It's pretty nice. So let's talk more about the 112. I went over the armor. Now let's go over the the soft stats right here. We got 1,500 hit points. Pretty basic for this type of tier of a heavy tank. 46, 46.65 uh, tons, almost 47. 580 engine power. So it doesn't have that much engine power, but it has you know enough to keep moving. 45 speed limit, which is kind of nice. This thing does pick up speed if you go downhill. So that's pretty nice and pretty good traverse speed turns 
fairly quickly. It's not it's not medium tank, but you know moves good enough. It's, you know it's mobile, and as we already went over the armor, and let's talk about the gun. As you can see, right, that's the standard shell damage. Here's the gun. That's I mean you guys know about this gun. This is on every single Russian, you know, tier six, seven, eight, nine tank. <laughs> Mostly uh, tier eight, tier sevens and eights. The the IS has this gun, KB1S has it, and you know it's a pretty, pretty shitty gun. Obviously, it's drawbacks, crappy accuracy and long aim time, and and you know crappy rate of fire, of course. Its strength would be the alpha damage, and that's pretty much it. The pen, 175 pen at tier eight. Uh, it's you know you're not gonna do too good. Depends where you're shooting at like tier 8 heavy tanks with uh, like KV4s and stuff you'll, you're just gonna bounce off them so I mean 175 pin just ain't enough for those type of tanks this is why we have 250 pin as you can see right there for gold rounds and they're not just regular gold rounds these are heat rounds so you know how heat works it's not you know as as good as APCR but 250 of 250 uh, pin is just you know a massive amount you could you know pin E75s and STIs I mean it's, it's gonna help out a lot at the higher tiers when you get in a tier 9 game and you have to fight those heavily armored heavy tanks or heavily armored tanks you know in general those heat rounds are gonna you know do some damage so those are pretty nice and they will cost you 5.6k to fire them as you can see right here um, well, while we're at it, let's go ahead and go over the consumables. You need a uh, automatic fire extinguisher because this thing catches on fire a lot. Even with my CO2, I mean, I don't catch on fire too much now, but I'm, ass I'm assuming you guys probably won't get it, and we'll get burnt stabs and uh, you know gun lane drop because the accuracy, I mean, the aim time is just so shitty. So yeah, you, you definitely need an automatic fire extinguisher give you that extra 10%, so you won't catch on, uh, on fire as much. Uh, repair kit, first aid kit, pretty standard stuff. Um, so you can see crappy rate of fire. And this is my reload with this tank. Uh, 10.89. Notice I have Brothers in Arms and, you know, I got Rammer Vents. So I already have, like, the optimum, you know, reload speed unless, you know, unless I spend money or whatever and buy the, that consumable. Like the, the cola or whatever. Let me see, what do they call it on here? They call it... Uh, yeah, I guess they just call it this. <laughs> Improved combat rations. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to spend money or that on any of that. Even if, even though I do have some, I'd rather not get that. But yeah, this is the pretty much the uh, the fastest you're gonna reload with these settings right here. That you got rammer, vents, and brothers in arms. And let's let's see turret traverse. So the turret doesn't turn too quickly, but like again, once again, it's not super slow. So it's it's all right. Uh, very good view range. It has compared to the IS6. It has uh, let me see how much of the IS6 got. IS6 has about 350. Okay, so it got 30 more meters of view range, which is nice compared to that. Uh, compared to the IS6, uh, signal range is decent, 600 meters. Uh, no one really cares too much about that. Ah, all right, so we t let's let's go to the equipment now. We talked about it slightly. Uh, rammer, you need this. This thing has really shitty DPM, really long reload. So you need this. This is a necessity right here. Uh, vents. This, this is just you know your preference. If you want a little bit more faster, you know if you want the tank to be just a little bit more better. And this is my equipment. Now, a lot of people don't don't have this on their 112, but you I mean you're gonna need this. 50% more to a fuel tank durability which means you're not going to catch on fire as much because your fuel tanks you know they won't you know catch on fire as much <laughs> so this is going to really help out if they shoot this lower plate I mean you're going to catch on fire if you don't have this like two or three shots you'll be on fire easily so this is why I have this because uh, like I said earlier uh, I caught on fire a lot so yeah I mean I didn't want to catch on fire anymore so I bought this and I don't really catch on fire too much anymore so that's nice but if you guys don't like my setup another good setup would be the the rammer if you don't care about catching on fire or anything uh, I would go with the rammer vertical stabilizer which is gonna help a lot and where is it at 
and hands gun lane drive so you could have better performance with your gun and you'll be able to aim quicker and and you know, whatnot so that's that's another good setup for this uh, tank now let's talk about the crew all uh, right see here's my crew obviously you want uh, six cents uh, I don't have repairs on this thing which I should have but I got mentor so you know I want to level up my uh, my other crew members how I'm out a little bit but you know you can have you know repairs for this um, for the gunner I got uh, dead eye of course the brothers in arms as you can see right there already dead eye and then I do have repairs on this you know everybody knows heavy tanks need repairs of course so that's pretty much it for the gunner driver I have uh, what is it called again yeah, preservative maintenance, so I wouldn't catch us fire as much. So, yeah, I don't really know if this would help too much for this tank, but yeah, why not? So I got this and repairs, of course. Uh, what else you would get? Probably clutch braking, so you could turn quicker. That's another good heavy tank uh, crew skill. Uh, Off-road driving would also help a bit. Loader skills. The uh, loader doesn't really have that much good skills, so. I just went ahead and put adrenaline rush just in case I get beat up a lot and you know get that little bit you know quicker reload and again once again repairs you know loaders those uh, loaders don't really have uh, good any any good skills safe storage is nice though but I don't have that yet uh, so yeah guys that's pretty much all I got to say about the the crew what else is there to talk about the 112 hmm. Well, I talked about the strengths already. Like I said, upper uh, upper plate armor, really nice, and the front turret armor, really nice. You can see by the numbers right here, and as you can see the sloping on that, like I talked about earlier. And pretty much a lot of tanks, uh, tier seven tanks will really just bounce off this pretty much all day if you keep it hold down. I mean, they're just gonna bounce easily, and maybe some tier seven TDs with gold rounds could maybe pin it. Uh, Maybe like they might shoot the like capolas or something, but I don't think they're gonna shoot right through the armor. Uh, what else is there to say about this? Well, the 112. Let's see. It plays. Its play styles. You know, it's pretty much an average heavy tank. I mean, it doesn't have the mobility, that much mobility to be like a medium tank or anything. So it plays like a regular heavy tank. You want to angle. Just don't angle too much. Uh, you know, you want to derp. You want to derp them in the face and you back up and reload because really long reload, like I said, longer than the IS-6 reload. And yeah, I mean, this is pretty much a heavy, you know, heavy gameplay style right here. Really nice, the really nice armor and upper plate and the turret armor, you know, will make you feel like a boss once you have, you know, once you're hold down and your lower plane is showing, this thing will bounce lots of shells. I mean, I... I got a gameplay video for you guys where I bounced, you know, a lot of shells on my 112, and I don't remember if I even got scratched in that, in that match. All I, all I remember is the shells just bouncing off. It was, yeah, it was just a little funny video. <laughs> it wasn't a lot of shells, but you know, it was a decent amount. So I will uh, post a gameplay video so you guys could see the armor, how how it works, you know, in some gameplay. So yeah, guys, uh, this is pretty much all I really got to say about the. 112. Um, I will post the gameplay separately. It's not going to be in the same video. This is, this is just going to be the 112 review for this video. So, yeah, be a lookout for the gameplay. And, yeah, I will upload it soon. And, you know, I'll see you guys later.